Today, I'm going to talk about my finished assassin build, as well as a hidden stat that is critically important for the 6th special. Hey everyone, Derpy here, welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. Getting started, the weapons are really, really simple for this hole. You want to throw on the best torpedo you have, which is the limited one. Put that on 8 slots for now, and you'll notice I don't have quite enough. It works out really well to have 8 times 5, which is 40 torpedoes here, because that's how many you're going to be offered. In terms of the last two spots, you can put countermeasures on here. A few people have been doing some really strange things with that, such as the deep sea countermeasure. That is not really an effective strategy, because Kickside likes to break their own rules, and while this says it should counter mortar and missile, it often doesn't. It's possible that this actually will counter mortars and the target, although I highly doubt it. The other thing people are trying is they're putting on gales or hailstorms or whatever. The problem with those is those cannot fire while submerged, and this submarine stays submerged the whole time, at least once they, once they have fixed it. Instead of trying and playing around and hoping deep sea countermeasures will work, the best thing you can do is throw on the Cormorant anti-torpedoes. These things can be found, there's five of them on a Ronin fleet in Price Pool 1 of, of the Forsaken mission that you can scrap, and they'll probably be around in pillage. I think two of these on every ship is definitely the way to go for this hole. They now work like gales in terms of that they keep firing until something is shot down, not like the Missile Defense System 3s say. This is a really, really important thing. You want anti-torpedoes here, and you probably want 10 of, 10 of them on here. If you only want to go with 5, that's okay, but I would really strongly recommend keep two of these things on. In terms of the heavy weapons, the only choice you have here is the Death Strike Heavy Torpedo, which is actually not that good of a weapon because it does 2,000 damage at a higher reload time compared to the other regular weapons, which deal actually slightly less damage with a much lower reload time. So this heavy Death Strike Torpedo is not great, but it is better than nothing. It does also slow enemies down, which is okay, and it is unlimited stacks, as many as you can hit in one second, which is probably... 10, 5 times 2 heavy weapons. We're not getting a second heavy weapon or anything like that. Just throw two of these on here. You can get four in the FM per week. The armors are the next thing I'll go for. You really just want to split 50-50 X and concussive armor. I happen to think that the concussive is actually slightly likely to be more avoidable. Looked like from those VXP targets, people who coin their fleets, and by the way, thank you for that, we're taking more explosive damage. So as of right now, I'm leaning towards three explosive, although I'm going to leave these off as long as possible. Specials, for the most part, are pretty straightforward. The Nightwind engine is the best one to go. Make sure you match combat speed on the fleet. There is an argument to use the old Reef Rider engine, which does give you concussive damage if you're looking for that, although it is significantly slower than the Nightwind engine by 15%. Throw that on there, make sure all your ships have the same one. Now, the next thing is the Shadow Strike system. This is limited. It's essentially a Liberty Belt 4 uh, Liberty Belt 5, whatever you want to call it here, it is very good, it gives you tons of concussive reload, tons of concussive damage, almost more than doubling your damage, this is a must-have on your fleet. You also want something on here to boost countermeasures, the best option for that is the Kinjutsu countermeasure system, again, tier 9.5 Ronin type special, gives you some survival and accuracy, I would rather have damage and I thought about reload from the Hydro Atomizer nozzle, but decided against that one. The survival, while not great at tier 10.5, is still important. The other few things you're going to want to do include some regular specials, and one more of these limited guys here, which is the Bushido Battery. This is 50% more concussive damage. It is in price pool 2 of the Forsaken Mission for pretty cheap, 2 or 4 a week. Pick a few of those up and throw those on your ships. It will do okay. If you don't have enough of these, just throw in one of the older ones on here, and the one that does the highest concussive damage if possible. But the Bushido battery is quite good for this one, even if the splash damage reduction is a pretty useless stat. The last special we all agree on is the Ambush Torpedo Bay. This is a marginal improvement over the Saya Torpedo Bay. If you don't have the Ambush, just use the Saya, although the Ambush does have a much lower build time. Taking a look at the last special, we need to talk about the hidden stat, which is actually in the built-in special weapon. And by the way, as we talk about stats, this thing is a submarine. It will stay underwater the entire time. No surfacing, no weird gimmicky stuff. Uh, cloak efficiency, dive time, none of that's going to matter. Kickside is never going to make a sub. 
in skirmish style at least, a lionfish is a complete abomination, but they're never going to make a sub that actually matters in terms of surfacing stuff like that. Don't play around with any of that stuff. Stealth won't matter. You'll be spotted across the entire map. They have a sonar range of 10 million on there. Now, in terms of the special abilities, there's two of them here. One makes sense. It's the Red Notice Aura. It makes all your assassins stronger. I do think this 4,000 survival was very low, and an oversight by Kixai should be higher. And of course, this will apply to the flagship as well once that comes out. Now, the interesting one is the Caltrop Smart Mines. They are theoretically not affected by almost everything possible, except for projectile speed. And you might be saying projectile speed, big deal, doesn't matter. These things are accuracy-based, right? Well, you're kind of right, except there is a hidden stat in here, which is a fuse timer on these smart mines. They essentially move forward and explode after two, two and a half, three seconds. I believe it actually changes slightly based on your U3 upgrade level, which adds projectile speed, which is why they may not be showing this thing. But the Caltrop smart mines have projectile speed in them. They have a timer on there. So if, if this thing explodes after two seconds, you want the highest projectile speed so it actually goes that full 108 range. If you just take a shell into a cargo, you'll notice it doesn't actually go 108 because, it's, it, because it is exploding after that range. For this weapon to actually work effectively, you're going to need to throw on some projectile speed. And you don't want to do something like high velocity rounds, I don't think, because that can just go completely crazy. You know, 110 projectile speed seems great, it turns out that thinking outside the box in this game doesn't really work very well, and evade and stuff like that is also important, so I'm going to go for Damage Diffusion System 2, which does give you some combat speed, which is of course nice, 50% projectile speed, which is not insignificant, 20k splash damage reduction, which, while I'm unhappy with how that mechanic works, 20,000 is still a decently large number, especially if you're still at U0, and evade is always nice. So this special gives you about four or five things that are nice to have all in one there. So there's the build, and you are underweight. The important thing to note is that you do really want projectile speed to happen, because if this built-in Caltrop weapon explodes after two and a half seconds, you want it to have gone the fastest in that duration of time. Like I said, there may be th some things that we figure out in the first raid that high velocity rounds, for whatever reason, works better here, although I wouldn't really expect that to last. I will go ahead and put the Kixai hash code, which you can share by and load in by clicking share and pasting in here and pressing load. I'll put that in a Google Docs, which is in the description of the YouTube video. And of course, I'll answer any questions you all have. With that said, thank you so much to those folks whose names appear on screen now. And as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.